Praise the Lord. We are grateful to God for this time that he has given unto us again in this season. Uh, it's now almost three months for us as a local church here in Ongatarungai when we last gathered or assembled. I think if I remember well, it was in the month of March 22nd when we last had a, an assembly in the local church. So three months down the line, we have been sharing through the media, through this means of technology, and we give God all the glory that his word cannot be hindered, even by situations, by pandemics. His word will continue to spread. And so we give God all the glory and praise for this time he has given unto us. We want to begin with a word of prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have provided another opportunity, another time in which we can receive your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit will minister the word into our spirit mind by means of your power, your anointing, opening our inner mind, giving us an enlightenment turning the eyes of the inner man in us. Give us victory together with the viewer and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So welcome, dear viewer, into this program. My name is Sakai Ongeno. If you are listening for the first time, I love the Lord and I thank him for the for saving my soul firstly, and for also giving me an opportunity uh, that I can serve him. I am married to Pastor Antoine Seforangeno, who I know is praying with us at this time for this program. Praise the Lord. We are also grateful for Sister Margaret Ndara, who has been doing this recording behind the camera most of the time you are just seeing me, but you don't see the person that spends time sometimes late into the night to try to load the program into the internet so that you can receive. So we pray that God will also bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share a word that uh, I, I feel my heart to share. I know uh, said in another session. I'm taking it from the book of Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 17 and verse 18. I just want to read those two verses for a start. Uh, Isaiah chapter 41 verse 17 and 18. The Bible says, when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst I the Lord will hear them I the God of Israel will not forsake them I will open rivers in the high sorry I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the, the Bible is giving us here a promise that God has made to a certain kind of people. It says when the poor, poor and needy seek water. The poverty that is spoken about here is not poverty in terms of material possession, but it is poverty in the things of the spirit, in the spirit man. <clears throat> Just like, excuse me, <clears throat> Just like Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. In spirit. It, it was not speaking about material possessions. Blessed are the poor in spirit. 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. So the Bible is saying here, when the poor, that is poor in spirit, when the poor and needy seek water, seek water, and there is none, there is none available. When they seek and there is none available, and their tongue, their tongue fails for thirst. Their, that is, their tongue is drying up because of the thirst. God makes a promise to that kind of people. God makes a promise. And I believe that God is speaking here about spiritual waters or spiritual thirst. Spiritual thirst that he is speaking about here. And he says, his promise is this. He says, I, the Lord, will hear them. I will hear them in their cry for thirst, their cry for water. I will hear their cry. I, the Lord. It's, it's again like God putting his signature by his name. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the Lord, will hear them. And then he also says, I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them, will not forsake those people that are crying out of thirst, that, they are, that whose tongue is failing uh, or drying up because of thirst. And in answer, the Lord says, I will open rivers in high places. That is for those people. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys I will make the wilderness a pool of water for them and the dry land springs of water. Praise God. So that is God's promise to the thirst. It's God's pledge, God's oath. It's like God has taken an oath for everyone who is thirst. Praise God. In, in, in my sharings in the programs previous, I, I know or I am very sure I mentioned a verse in the book of the Gospel of John, which was a time when Jesus was in a feast at Jerusalem. And I think the feast took some days. And on the last day of that feast, which was the most important day, the great day was the last day of the feast. The Bible speaks something there that is on extraordinary, it's out of the ordinary about what Jesus did. Let me read it. John chapter 7, verse 37 through to 39. It says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. You see, he stood up. People were seated. Jesus himself also was seated. But he stood up. He must have been going, he was going to say something important. He stood up. And then secondly, he cried. He cried in saying what he was going to say. He stood up and he cried. Saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, that is an, a, a promise that Jesus has made again. And he's doing that even to this day as we share this message. He's doing that. He's still calling out for anyone who is thirsty to come unto him and drink. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and when we read about that, uh, uh, let me complete it. Verse 38 says, He that believes on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly, out of his inner man, out of his spirit person, out of his spirit man shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water shall flow out of them. That is as they drink, rivers of living water shall flow uh, out of their belly. Rivers of, of running water. And Pastor Denine explains what that running water is. Pastor Denine says, uh, but this this, this water he was speaking about, but this spoke he, spoke Jesus of the Spirit, that is of the Holy Spirit. He was speaking of the Holy Spirit, which they that believe 
on him should receive. Uh, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And praise God. And so going back to Isaiah, we say that this a spiritual this is a spiritual thirst for spiritual waters. Spiritual thirst for the waters of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. In many places in the Bible, uh, God is making the promise of rivers to wildernesses, to deserts, to desert, like the scripture we have read before in Isaiah 43, Joel chapter 2. For the, Isaiah 43, God says that I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. For I will create rivers in the desert, uh, <coughs> rivers in the wilderness, praise God. And, and I will give drink to my people, my chosen, my people, my chosen. I will give drink to my chosen. So um, my, my understanding is that wilderness is there or desert is representing uh, someone who is in thirst. Because uh, as we know, a, a wilderness or a desert, the, the soil there or sand, uh, the soil there is so dry that if you were to pour water, it will be absorbed so quickly, so fast, so fast because the soil or the, the earth is so thirsty. The earth is so thirsty, so dry that it absorbs so quickly. Praise God. And that represents the heart of the believer that Jesus is saying, if any man thirst, if any, let him come unto me. Let him take action and come unto me. Let him be taken by that thirst, be driven by that thirst to seek me. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and God has made a promise as we read. Isaiah 41, verse 17 and 18. God said, when the poor and needy seek water, seek after water, they are, they are coming seeking for water, spiritual water, uh, <clears throat> and there is none and their tongue fails for thirst. He said, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. God has taken an oath for everyone who is thirsty, thirsty enough to seek, thirsty enough to look after, thirsty enough to go longing, to, 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 be, to, to, to seek the Lord so strongly. Praise the Lord. God has promised to open the rivers in high places for them. God has promised to make fountains in the midst of the valleys for them. God has promised to make a pool of water for them in the wilderness. God has promised to bring forth springs of water for them. Praise the Lord. And so I believe that God is really longing or looking for us to reach that level where the, the thirst in us is so strong that it, it drives us into God. Praise God. Uh, I, I say that there are many things that I, I keep saying. Uh, but, so excuse me for that. One man in the Bible that, among many, that uh, blesses my heart. Uh, I mean, the whole Bible is a blessing. Uh, but let me mention David for this time. David, the Bible says something about him. You know, Israel had many kings, starting from King Saul, Solomon, Rehoboam, name them Jeroboam, name them all, the whole line of them, Judah and Israel, many kings. There were many kings that sat upon the throne as kings over, the, over, uh, over Israel or when it was it became a divided kingdom over Judah and others over Israel. They, were, they sat upon the throne to rule, to reign. But it's only of David that God mentions something about Jesus when he returns. I believe it is, it is referring to the time of the millennium when Jesus Christ will come to rule for 1,000 years together with us as saints. Praise God. The Bible says that when Jesus returns, he will sit upon the throne of David. 
He will sit upon David's throne. David's throne. So there must be something in David that God, God saw that distinguished David uh, among all the other many kings that sat upon the throne. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I believe among those things, those things that really please God in, in, in David's life is his heart. Acts chapter, I think that in verse 22 says, I have found a man. I, I have found a man. God said that I, I have found a man. I found a man. If, if, if I can read it, I hope I, uh, I, I will quickly find it. This is what God said about David. He said, um, <clears throat> this is God's testimony about David. And he said, and when he had removed him, that is King Saul, when God had removed King Saul, he raised up unto them, unto Israel, David. He raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony. God gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my desire, or which shall fulfill all my will. I found a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Praise God. Amen. He was a man that sought after a clean heart, a pure heart. That is one thing about him. And he was, he, he, he would seek it enough, deeply enough, deeply enough to be able to receive it from God. Praise God. But apart from seeking a pure heart, what I see also in him is that he had a, such a thirst for God. He's, he had such a longing for God that we would compare his heart with what we have read in Isaiah. That his heart was so thirsty. It was like his tongue, his spiritual tongue was failing for thirst. And that thirst would drive him uh, to seek God so strongly. Praise the Lord. Uh, I believe the psalm in Psalm 42 is of David. I could be wrong, but it's, I believe I believe it is him. Where he says, as the deer panted for the waters, so my soul longed after God, after the living God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if you read there, you find that he was actually crying. He speaks about tears. Tears were running down because of his thirst. He, that thirst would drive him to cry. Tears would flow from his eyes because he was genuinely thirsting for God, like a dry ground, like a dry land, like someone poor and needy and is, is seeking God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, and, and you may read, you, uh, you may take time to read that Psalm. Uh, Psalm 42. You, you find it's like he was surrounded by people that were mocking him. They were, they were mocking him and saying, where is your God? Where is your God? Where is your God? Like we read in, we read in Joel. Joel, let not the, the heathen say, reproach and say, where is their God? So uh, to me, David was longing to see God manifest himself, to see God come down and manifest himself, manifest himself. Praise the Lord. And this is what we, we need to be longing for as we look to God for revival. We are longing for God to manifest himself. Praise God. It's a prayer that we have been reading in Habakkuk 3, where it says, uh, in the midst of the years, make known, make yourself known, O God. In the midst of the years, Revive your work. Revive your church. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so my question to myself and to you is, is our thirst strong enough? Is our thirst strong enough? There, there is a word that I believe I've mentioned before. There is a word I've used before in sharing. That a word, a phrase, a word that I just came to my mind. Threshold. Threshold is... Uh, when you use it in the natural languages, it's like a minimum. Like when uh, 
students have done examinations and they are to go to university or to go to high school, there, there is a cutoff point where, where, where the, they must attain to a certain mark to, in order to be able to be, be, be qualified to enter into university. Praise the Lord. Re, go into high, thank God for, 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 for the program right now where our government, God bless our government, is, is seeking that all the children that are in primary school, they, they transit into secondary school. But uh, for university now, there, there is a, a minimum mark. That is what I'm calling a threshold. We must meet a threshold in order to enter into university. And I'm using that same word for, for in the spiritual sense, like there is a minimum where God wants us to attain to before we can enter into his blessing, before we can see himself, we can see God manifest himself, before we can see God pour his spirit among us. Hallelujah. That we must measure to a certain level of thirst, real thirst in us. Praise God. Thus, oh God. You know the, that word Jesus spoke about uh, in Matthew 11, 12. It says, it says that the kingdom of God suffered violence. Is that what it said? Let me read it. Let me read it. It looks like I'm not quoting it properly. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. Violent there is speaking about people who are desperate. They want something so much. They are desperate for it. The, the violent, the desperately violent shall take it, shall take the things of the kingdom. Praise God. So you see, thus can drive somebody into desperation. Into desperation. Let me think of a, uh, I saw a documentary one time uh, on, on television. Uh, everyone has their kind of preferences when you watch things on TV. Uh, one of the things I, I, I would sometimes take a little time to watch is, is animals, creations in their natural setting, animals in their natural setting. And they have such documentaries on television, some channels. <clears throat> and I, I was watching one time when they were, they were giving a documentary about lions and about the deer, which we have spoken about, the deer, the, the deer. And the, the, the kind of setting this time was not in the, in the plains, in the Maasai land, which we know, but it was in a desert kind of setting, where there are antelopes in a desert setting, and there are also lions. And by the way, in that documentary, I saw that the lions in the, in the wilderness setting they're much smaller than the ones we know in Masai Mara, where there, there's, there are plains, there, there's grass, and, and there are many animals. In the desert, they are much smaller. The lions are much smaller. No, the, 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 but the, the, the thing is still the same. The lions feed on the deer. Uh, they, they, they run after the deer. Praise the Lord. So what the lions do in the wilderness setting, I saw, was the, the time the antelopes to come out of hiding. You see, the, the antelopes uh, or the deer, they're hiding, they're hiding somewhere in caves, they're hiding somewhere where the lions cannot see them. They're hiding. But at some point, they still have to come out because of thirst as the deer panted for the waters. Even though it's so dangerous and so risky for them to come out of hiding, but the thirst is so strong that it drives them out to risk their lives in such a what? Praise God. And that is where the lion now takes time or, or, or times, times the when it's coming out in such a what? 
But uh, my, my point of, of, of referring to that documentary is that the thirst drives the, the, the deer to come out. The thirst is so strong that it drives them out. Hallelujah. So I, I was saying that the threshold of our thirst, our thirst must meet God's threshold, must meet God's minimum in, for the release of revival, for the outpouring, because God has taken an oath. Isaiah 41 is our basic scripture, or base scripture this, in this chapter. God has taken an oath that for the poor and needy that are seeking for water, their tongue is failing for thirst, God says, I will hear them. I will hear them. Uh, it's like God will even not hear what they are crying about, but God will hear the thirst. God will hear. God will, will sense the thirst in them. is strong. The thirst itself is crying. It's not even the words that are coming out of their mouth. But it's uh, the, the thirst that is crying. Hallelujah. I will hear them. And I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places. That is for them. I will uh, make fountains in the midst of the valleys. That is for them. And pools of water in the wilderness for them. And dry uh, springs of water in dry land for them. Praise God. It's God's promise. But have we met that threshold? Is our thirst for this outpouring strong enough? Has it gone strong enough? To cause us to violently seek after God, after the living God, to see him manifest himself, to see him manifest himself, hallelujah, by pouring his spirit in such a, 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 a volume, a volume, such a, a, a volume as to make rivers, hallelujah, rivers of the spirit, until rivers of living water will come out of us. Oh, glory to God. May our hearts be like a wilderness. May our hearts be like a, a desert because of the thirst. Because of the thirst. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, as, as I was thinking about this, uh, I, I was also looking at it from the negative side. Uh, ne negative side. Ne negative in this sense that God judges sin. God, God judges sin. He shows mercy. To them that are repentant, that turn from their wicked ways, hallelujah, that forsake their sins, that confess their sins and, and, and forsake them, he will show them mercy. But on the other hand, he judges sin. And let me just tell you what I, why I'm saying that in the negative sense. In the book of Genesis chapter 15, when God was making a covenant with Abraham, a very important covenant that touches on our salvation, that touches on the coming of Jesus Christ to be the sacrifice. Uh, that, that Genesis covenant that Abraham, I mean, God was making with Abraham, God was making with Abraham, God <clears throat> mentioned something to Abraham, something that was prophetic, it was speaking about the future, uh, this in Abraham's day. And God says, know for sure that your seed, your, your seed, your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land. They will be taking as strangers and they will serve that nation. They will be enslaved and for a person. And, uh, and after 400 years, they will come out. 400 years they will come out. And God continues to, to speak about it there, about Abraham's descendants in that covenant and God says somewhere at the end of that verse he says for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full the iniquity of the Amorites that is of the Canaanites who, who are to be displaced who are to be dispossessed later the, their iniquity had not reached the level where God would judge it hallelujah you see, uh, that's why I'm getting the word threshold, a minimum level. It's looked like even in matters of judgment, matters that are negative, God has a threshold. God has a minimum. So God was saying to Abraham that the iniquity, the sin 
of the Amorites, of the Canaanites, is not yet full. It's not yet ripe for judgment. Hallelujah. God will still give them space of mass where they could turn. But as we know, the, the Amorites, the Canaanites, they continued in sin and idolatry in all forms of immoral worship, all most forms of evil, born as if it were, until such time when God would drive them out. It's like uh, uh, God, uh, the Bible also uses another phrase. It uses the land will vomit them. When their sin has gone so much, God will allow the land to vomit them. Praise God. So we see in the Bible that uh, there is a time if people continue in a, a sin, continue in wickedness, continue in idolatry, continue in wickedness, there is a time like the patience of God runs out. It comes to an end. The grace of God is over and judgment must come. Hallelujah. So that is what God said to Abraham, that the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And I was borrowing that understanding now into the positive sense, whereby I believe that our thirst also for the waters of the Spirit must meet the threshold of God, must meet God's minimum, must be so strong in us that such that it, can, it will cause heavens to open. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It will drive us to seek God, to seek after the living God. Amen. Until he pours the waters of the Spirit. Glory to God. And you know, that will take us into, into not just shallow, casual prayers, but very deep prayers. Uh, I think the Bible calls it travailing. Travailing. And, uh, and I saw a scripture concerning that also in Isaiah. May I read it? Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 66, verse. Uh, Isaiah 66, I hope I'll find it. Isaiah 66, is it verse 8? Thank you, Jesus. We are heading to finish. I'm encouraging you, dear viewer, in Jesus' name. It says, Who has heard such a, a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Can the earth bring forth in one day? That is, crops that spring up in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Uh, for as soon as I am travail, she brought forth her children. As soon as the prayer of Zion reached the point of travailing, reached the point of, 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 of being so strong, she brought forth her children. Praise the Lord. As soon as a, a, a seeking God became strong enough to be like a traveling mother, a mother who is in labor, she will not stop until she brings forth the child. So the, you know, the, 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 the labor pain, uh, the mother in labor, she will continue. Praise God. Amen. She will travail until the child is brought forth. So the Bible is saying, as soon as Zion travail, she brought forth. And I believe that as soon as a church will get to the point of being thirsty enough uh, and such that her seeking God, her prayer, her intercession, her desperation is so strong in seeking after this revival of God, this manifestation of God, manifestation of God, that the heathen, the world will no longer ask, where is their God? Where is the God of the church? They will no longer mock us. They will see our God. Oh God, praise God. Amen. They will see our God. They will see our God. Amen. Rivers of living water uh, flowing out of us, flowing out of us in the name of Jesus. So I'm sharing this, uh, dear viewer, so that you are thirst. Your thirst may go, may rise up, may rise up and reach the point that will, will cause heavens to open in the name of Jesus. That is my short message.
today in the name of Jesus. It's my sharing today is to encourage you that let, let your thirst, let your intercession, oh God, let your thirst match, match what God has set, match what God has set in order to open the heavens for us, in order to release, to release this great outpouring for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is not a man to lie. He said that, that I will open rivers in high places. I, I the Lord will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them that are thirsty. Praise God in Jesus' name. Let me stop there in the name of Jesus Christ. May, may your, your thirst for God your increase so much to the point of travailing, to the point of seeking God so deeply in the name of Jesus like David. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise, oh, Father. We give you honor. We give you adoration, our God. We thank you, Father, because you're speaking to us. You're speaking to our hearts, oh God. You're speaking to our hearts. You're questioning, oh God. You're questioning the level of our thirst, the level of our desperation, oh God of glory, the strength of our desperation, oh God. Oh Father God, as you are reminding me, Holy Spirit, reminding me of Jesus himself. Whose, whose intercession was so strong in Gethsemane. Gethsemane, where the Bible says in Hebrews, he was hard because of his cry. He was hard. He was hard. He offered up strong cries. He offered up strong prayers. His cry was so strong, so strong, so strong he was hard. Oh my God, may our thirst, our Father, Rise up to the level you will hear us and cause heavens to open in the name of Jesus upon your church, upon your people, upon your chosen in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God of glory. This is our prayer to you, Holy Spirit, creating us that thirst, O oh Lord, creating us, O oh Lord, creating us that hunger, creating us that thirst and hunger. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, creating us, we pray, creating us, we pray, which will drive us into you, Lord, into seeking you, living God. You is the living God who giveth living waters, living waters, living waters, living waters, living waters. Oh God, we thirst for you, Lord. We long for you, Lord. We long for your visitation. We cry for your visitation, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we cry for your manifestation, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, come our Father. Come our Father. Come our Father. Come our God. Come our God. In the name of Jesus. So touch the viewer. Touch me, Lord. Touch everyone, our Father, that will listen to this short sharing, this short message where you have taken an oath, where you have made a promise, a promise with your signature, the signature of your name. The, when the poor and the needy uh, seek water, seek water, and their thirst, and their tongue fails for thirst, you said, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers. I will open rivers in high places for them, fountains for them, pools of water for them, springs of water for them. Oh God, in Jesus' name, may our thirst match, oh God, match your threshold, match your, the level you require from us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on our nation. Have mercy on Zion. Let Zion travail. Let your church travail. Oh God, out of thirst, oh God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh God of glory. We pray for the church. We pray for the church, oh God. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, that we shall rise up, O oh Lord. We pray for the church. 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 We pray for the church to thirst, to long, to hunger in the name of Jesus, O oh God of glory. So bless your church, our Father. Bless the viewer. Meet the viewer at the, their the point of need, our Father, spiritually, materially, Lord, in this time. O oh God, when things are our Father, O oh God, it is so difficult. We pray, Father, that you meet the viewer at the point of financial need, even needs for home, even needs need for food, need for provision. O oh God, you are our supplier. Sup satisfy, satisfy that longing soul. Satisfy that viewer. Satisfy, satisfy their need. Satisfy their need out of your riches, O oh God, in glory by Christ Jesus, our Father, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we equally pray for our nation that you have mercy, Father. Have mercy upon the sick in hospital. Have mercy, Father, stretch your mighty hand. Touch and heal, O oh God. Touch and heal every sick person in the name of Jesus. I proclaim, I speak healing upon everyone, O oh God, that has listened to this word. I proclaim healing in the name of Jesus upon the sick. O oh God, heal our land, heal our nation, heal the nations, O oh Father, heal our Father in the name of Jesus. Heal, 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 O oh God, heal our Father, heal families, heal our Father, heal relationships, heal our Father. Heal our God, heal our Father, heal Almighty God, heal, O oh God, heal, heal, we pray for healing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we honor you, we give you all the glory and all the praise. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity, thank you for the blessing through this program. Thank you, Holy Spirit, we honor you, we give you glory, we give you praise. Because this we are asking and believing together in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. And just in case uh, you're listening to this program and you have never known Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Savior, the only Savior, the Bible says about him, that there is no other name, no other name given under heaven, no other name given under heaven by which man can get saved. There is no other name except the name of Jesus. Accept the name of Jesus. He alone is the Savior. He alone went to the cross, shed sinless blood that you may be saved. So if you're there, you wish to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart as your Savior, would you say this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Say, I've heard your word. I've heard your word. You loved me enough to go to the cross enough to come down from heaven to seek me i come to you lord jesus i open my heart to you wash me with your precious blood and cleanse me by your precious blood i welcome you to my heart i receive you lord jesus into my heart to be my lord and savior i thank you for saving me saving my soul and i now confess by faith that I'm a child of God, that I'm born again because I've received Jesus in my heart. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. I want to tell you that if you pray that prayer from your heart, you're born again, you're a child of God. That is how I got saved. Go to a church near you where, where the Bible is preached. The truth of the word is preached. May the Holy Spirit lead you and you will grow. Together with other believers, there is warmth in fellowship of believers. You can't stay out alone. And when, when the churches begin to open, join up with other churches. But in the meantime, look for a neighbor who is born again. Look for a pastor near you. In Jesus' name, may God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to this program. May God bless you and bless you indeed in Jesus' name. Pray for us also. Keep praying for us. 
Keep us in prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.